everyone, welcome, young Tarnished. I hope you're having a fine day. This video is about tips and tricks that I've learned over the time I've been playing this game until I got the Platinum. So, there will be some spoilers, so you have been my warned. But other than that, I hope you have fun. Alright, so, welcome to the Lands Between. Here's a few pointers for you that makes the game so much easier. Uh, so whenever you start your game, this is for everyone that's completely new, choose whichever class you want. You'll eventually find every item anyway, so provided you search far and wide. <laughs> well, however, to make it as simple as possible, let's choose the Astrologer. Why? Well, because magic. You can attack stuff from afar with little risk of getting hit. So, this for this example, I am choosing Astrologer. Uh, you also have the cho choice to choose between Type A for ma male and Type B for female. So, enter your desired name. I'm choosing Dom as my name as um, my name is Damascus. Uh Age doesn't matter. The most important item to start with here is the Golden Seed. You'll find every item later anyway, so... Starting with an extra potion is always helpful. After creating your character, pick up the Tarnished Wizened Finger. Write messages with this, get healed whenever someone interacts with, with your message, uh, so any kind of message. Uh, it can be ambush ahead, hidden wall ahead, or whatever, so write down lots of messages. It'll help you. It'll guarantee help you later in game, especially when you're fighting bosses or some kind of dangerous en enemy. That sudden burst of heal will absolutely help. Here we have an example of getting healed by messages being appraised, so be sure to leave messages in places where other players can find and interact with them, be it helpful messages or just funny messages. Someone out there might be able to heal you when you need it the most. For example, during a boss fight and you hear about to die, someone might just heal you back to have full health. Here's another example during a boss fight. Notice my health went back to full instead of me taking damage. It's thanks to every player out there praising messages, so if you want to put down some messages somewhere, it'll be found or helpful to someone. Also, if you're new to the franchise, go through the tutorial area as there's a ton to learn. If you skip it, you might miss out on a few things. Putting points into Vigor will help you out tremendously as that'll increase your HP so that you can survive monster hits, boss hits, invading player hits and so on. Having 40 points into Vigor gives you around 14 to 1500 HP if I remember correctly. You can put points into whatever attributes that you want, however the increase in damage early on is less than ideal. Having points into, say, intelligence as we are sorts increases damage but not worth it early game. You want to survive. Having lots of vigor does that. Looking at weapons having 25 while well, having 25 in dex versus 65 in dex is roughly an increase of 100 damage. So, therefore, to do more damage you really need to upgrade your weapons. Although weapon scaling does help, but it's not worth it early game. So whatever points you get into Vigor and respect, no, respect later if, uh, if needed. If I remember correctly, after boss three, I think it was, boss fight number three or four, you can respect. So I'm sorry for that spoiler, but it's, to inform you about it, so you 
cannot really make any mistakes putting points into this, but your number one priority is vigor. So no matter that, no matter what class you start out with, uh, kudos to you if you finish the game with low vigor. But that's only making the game harder for you. So if I remember correctly, when uh, when you kill the second boss and you travel to the round table talk to a certain npc there and that very so uh, uh, that npc will give you a plus eight upgraded weapon so now we're doing damage so when you're out there in the world you might come across something like this glowing skull don't be afraid of it just either walk up to it hit it with your sword or you can roll on top of it. Once you crush your skull, it's always going to be a level 1 or golden rune 1 from them. So crush them, use them, and now we have, now we have some runes. Just in case you didn't know. When you're out there in the world, always be sure to pick these flowers up as you will need them to craft Pearl Calling Fingers. This is for co-op play, so you can see any player's summon sign whenever they're leaving the summon signs on the ground. So you can see them and summon them. Right. So whenever you kill someone... Oh, you've seen me. You don't have to wait to see if they've dropped an item or not. In Elden Ring, the enemy had dro has dropped something upon killed, they will emit a blue glow. So you'll save time on farming for certain items. There's always something useful. And this dude didn't drop anything. Cheap skin. When you look upon your different shields in the game, notice that some have physical 100, meaning it'll block your physical attacks 100%, and you won't take damage from physical hits. However, with shields with 60 or so, or anything below 100, you'll take damage when blocking with it. So, when you get to the end game, you will have picked up a whole lot of different arm sets. But, what does equipment load mean? Being on the heavy load means you'll be dodging or rolling really slow. You might avoid getting hit, but it's more likely to get hit as you are now much slower. However, if you were to be on the light load, you'll be rolling so much quicker, but might take more damage as you now have less armor to protect you. So, medium is the one to aim for as you'll have decent armor and a decent roll. However, as in all of the franchise Dark Souls, Elden Ring, well, Demon Souls even, armor doesn't really provide all that much protection. It might help out early game, but late game, it's all about the attributes. If a certain boss attacks uh, one shot you, Having more armor won't do as don't do much as it will probably still kill you. Having less might mean that you can dodge away in time. One thing that armor provides is poise. Poise can be thought of as in how much damage you take before you're interrupted or staggered. If you and an enemy were to hit each other at the same time, having higher Poise lets you tank through the attack and keep your attack animation going, whilst the enemy will be interrupted and stop its attack animation. So, it's fashion souls. Go for whatever armor that you think is the best looking. Also, did you know that you can double jump on the horse. When double jumping, 
you can instantly change the direction on the jump, double jump, as seen there. Do note that you cannot save yourself by double jumping right before you hit the ground after a really high fall. You'll die either way. However, if you do jump up or down via a sprint spring jump, which is the gush of air you'll see around the map, you won't die after a high fall after using one of these. However, if you jump down one, be sure to land where the air starts. And um, when it comes to these spring jumps, do remember to direct your jump before jumping. Don't expect it to auto direct you somewhere, as um, you see here. Now, for messages like this, you want to believe them. But at the same time, this could be a troll message. So, how do you figure out if you can walk out there or not? Well, by using a rainbow stone or a bow and arrow. Using a rainbow stone in this case, if there's a loud noise, then it means that it's a certain death if you were to go down there. However, if the stone doesn't break, it's safe to jump down, as you won't die. However, Elden Ring being Elden Ring. The game will troll you if you've not died in a while, it seems. Just look at this. Thank you, Elden Ring. <laughs> However, the game isn't always against you. There's other uses of rainbow stones. Well, you can use them to find out where it's safe to walk on, as seen earlier. However, what do you do when you run out of rainbow stones? Well, you MacGyver it, and you use bow and arrow. Use the arrow stuck on a path as an indication as where it's safe to go. Or, you know, you can use the bloodstains or messages on this invisible bridge that you're looking at but again there might be trolls so either use rainbow stones or bow and arrow just to be on the safe side also equip arrows and shoot like this Hey, it's safe there. Hey, it's safe there too. Well, you get the point. Oh, hello. And always be a little bit suspicious with a whole lot of blood pools, blood stains. Just line about. Now, if you were to hit a wall, enemies might hear that and be ready for a fight, as they now know your, of your presence. However, you can use this to your advantage as they won't see you coming, as they are now preoccupied trying to find you. Also, if you press buttons that if you press the directional button down or up, it will select your magic spells, your items to use and whatnot, right? However, if you want to go quickly, if you if you're desperate need to get a new potion on you or, or to drink a potion or to get back to your uh to get back the first slot of magic that you have, press and hold directional button to go back to your first memory slot or your first magic slot 
or if you press and hold down button, let's say, let's go to that one, hold and press and hold, it will jump straight back to your potion or whatever you have on your first item slot, which is for me. Sitting by any race, you can always go to flasks, you can add charges to flask, which is the golden seeds that you pick up. As you progress and increase the flask charges, meaning you have more flasks or more potions to use, you will eventually hit maximum. Having maximum is, let's see, I've allocated 14, so it's 10 for me. For the healing and four for mana potion. 14 flasks in total. Also, there's a certain item called a sacred tear that you pick up at the various church and various locations. Remember to increase the amount replenished by flasks, meaning you will get more health, more FP or mana every time you use a potion. And as you can see by my character here, I cannot inc replenish or increase anymore because I'm at max. And what is max, you can ask? Plus 12 is max. Also, allocate flask charges so that you can choose to have maybe all mana or 10 mana or, well, Whatever you fancy. But for me, I found out that I need 10 health because I'm kind of reckless. I just like, I, I like to run into things and just fight. Which kind of defeats the purpose because, because I am a sorcerer. However, you play however you want. However you want. And this, this works for me. Right, this one took me a long time to figure out, but thanks to my buddy Svede, he pointed out that whenever you look at the map, I mean, there's nothing to see. However, he pointed out that if you see this kind of symbol, this pillar here, if you were to ride towards it, let's see where it is. No, no, I don't want to. Uh, oh, why not? All right, remove that. I don't want to lose all my runes. Right. Oh, right, I should probably say that. When you equip items, you can equip. Uh, let's hide. Whenever you equip items, you can put stuff into the pouch like this. And to access these items, hold down triangle. And for me, whenever I press and hold triangle and press the button, directional button up, I will call my horse. So put whatever items you are most likely to use a whole lot into these item slots. So that you don't have to navigate through the entire menu to find, well, find whatever you need. Right, so equip that with whatever you want. Alright, oh, we're going to the point. Where did I put that point? It's right there. Right, you see that? Okay. You see that pillar looking thing there? That's your map. Pick that up. Map found. And hey presto. You now have a map. With these symbols telling you where you are to go. Well, for sorcerers like me and you, or anybody else, be sure to come to this, to these twin maiden husks. Pick up the item called Memory Stone. There's a whole bunch of memory stones out there in the world to pick up or to find after doing certain puzzles. Having more memory slots on you means you will also have more slots to have magic spells on. 
so it'll come in handy for those spells that requires maybe three slots for you to equip them. So for a sorcerer or a faith build, it is highly recommended that you find these memory stones. There's also a thing you can do with equipping dual weapons. If you were to put a katana or whatever other weapon you, that you want to use, as in this example I'm using a katana rivers of blood and a katana moon veil, I can equip them on right hand one and left hand one, meaning that I can now dual wield weapons and to attack with both weapons instead of using R1 and R2, which is only using utilizing the one weapon, you can press L1, which will in this sense use both weapons. This is like a power stance. And to be able to use power stance, you need to have the weapon of the same class, such as the katana and katana. If I were to use something else like Over the long sword and another long sword, straight sword. Oh, oh, I got one right there. Two similar class weapons. You can now go attack using L1. You will have different styles depending on your different weapons. So straight swords, actually pretty cool as well. However, if you want to go for something huge, like a dagger, well, huge and huge, if you were to go for zincadas or daggers, hitting L1 now, you will attack immensely fast. So if you were to apply bleeds or, uh, or poison or whatever that might be, if you were to have two reduvias, which will cause a lot of blood loss, Having two of these, any bosses that are, you know, weak against blood, blood loss, <laughs> they will die so fast. So dual wielding is actually really fun. However, using dual wield meaning, means that you don't have a shield to defend against in case you do need to defend against something. But I don't like playing with shields, so I prefer to dodge. So for me... This is more fun. Last tip for now will be instead of dragging the cursor all the way down to the round table hold. Well, you know, just open the map, hit triangle, square, and hit yes. Time saved. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Stay safe out there.